Greetings. Hi there. I thought I'd go live, see if anybody's awake, up, cares to like join me. Uh, I hope you do. Uh, you know, a lot of times I do these videos and I post these things, these aphorisms and helpful reminders about how to live your life better. And uh, sometimes we respond and ask questions, but I don't really, I don't really get the chance. To, uh, I don't like answering the questions. I like I'd like to answer the questions now in a live format where I can talk to people. So that's why I'm trying to do this live thing. Uh, so I'm hoping people will uh, talk and ask questions. You know, I talk about happiness and success. I talk about uh, cognitive therapy. I talk about uh, mental health issues. I talk about relationships, how to improve relationships, how to improve communication. You know, uh, happiness, success, forgiveness. Uh, do unto others, uh, the golden rule, uh, treating people as you wish to be treated. Uh, anything, if you got a question about anything I've ever talked about, if you've got a, a personal question about a, a relationship issue or anything going on with people at work or your friends or family, if there are toxic, hostile people in your life, how to deal with bullies, uh, I'm here now. Spend a few minutes and talk about stuff if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, if you want to just start a conversation. Um, I know one thing I, I did mention: do unto others and uh, turn the other, uh, do unto others and treat others as you wish to be treated. So let me clarify that. I know this is a religious thing. Uh, people believe that do unto others that uh, the golden rule is some kind of religious concept, and sure it is, of course, right? That's that's where we kind of got it from, the Bible. But uh, look, that, believe it or not, this is the secret to success. This is the problem on the planet. This is the main event. If each of us did this, if we treated other people as we wish to be treated, if we demonstrated courtesy and consideration and thoughtfulness and generosity and kindness and love and acceptance and tolerance, all the things that we would like other people to do to us, and that this is how we would like people to treat us, if we did this ourselves to everyone we met, it's not going to happen by next Tuesday, but look, this is the key to your personal happiness, in my opinion, to inner peace, to world peace, to global happiness. Uh, you know, we're never going to get rid of all the anger, the resentment, the twist uh, in the world or in our personal relationships. All the resentments we have in our personal relationships, a lot of it has to do with we're keeping score. We're competing with our loved ones, with our partners. We're, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're keeping score of our resentments. We're keeping score of, of what they've done that's good and bad to us. And, uh, we're, and we're stuck in our ego. We've got to get out of our ego. We've got to get out of ourself. We've got to think about oh, not what's in it for me, but how can I help other people? This is a large part of my uh, Forgive to Win concept, uh, my book, but uh, my philosophy is uh, if you really want to win, you got to uh, eliminate self-sabotaging behaviors getting in the way of your success. And the way you get rid of self-sabotaging behaviors uh, is to you gotta you gotta love yourself and forgive yourself and the way to love and forgive yourself is to love and forgive others to be of service to others to get out of your ego to get out of yourself to forgive others to help others to accept others and when you do this you're really healing forgiving loving and accepting yourself but the golden rule is the key the golden rule is the key treat others as you wish to be treated in the midst of an argument with a, a, a family member a friend anybody try to catch yourself try to Ask yourself, well, how does this, how does this sound? How might what I just said sound to the other person? How would I like it if that person had that tone with me? If that person appeared to be irritated and impatient with me, how would I feel? Okay, well, it wouldn't feel good, so then I shouldn't do this to somebody else. That's always what it comes down to. So try to be more aware, more vigilant over your thoughts, your emotions, your behaviors, and ask yourself how it how it will appear and come off to other people. How might they react to it? You know, a lot of times we say stuff and we, it's just right off the cuff, right off the top of our head, and we really don't think about how it might sound to other people. And uh, and sometimes other people can, can be quite offended and feel that we're being rude or, or insensitive or unkind. And, you know, these days sensitivity is, you know, is really ratcheted up very high. So you want to be aware of other people's sensitivities. So it's always best to err on the side of consideration, courtesy, giving people the benefit of the doubt, not assuming the worst, but rather assuming the best. Assume people are not trying to hurt you or attack you. Uh, yeah. Um, and I can, I can segue a little bit here and no, no one's, 
no one's asking questions, but I don't blame you. Uh, but uh, if anything does occur to you, uh, you feel bold enough to talk about something, uh, that would be great. But uh, I can talk about boundaries, too. That's always something very uh, important to people. This is another uh, area where people get in their own way. Uh, this is where relationships fail. Most relationships fail because people don't respect each other. People don't respect each other's boundaries. You know, basically a simple concept of a boundary is uh, if someone says to you, you know, when you call me a moron, I don't like that. So if you keep on calling me a moron, I'm not going to hang around you. We're, you know, I can st I'll, I'll love you from afar, but I, I don't want to be around someone who's going to call me names and bully me and be toxic and hostile. I want to be around people who are uh, who, who like being around me, treat me well, make me feel good about myself. And so uh, if you keep doing this to me, I'm going to go away. Uh, you don't want to go away, but you're going to go away because you don't want to be around toxic, hostile people who are make, trying to uh, lower your self-esteem and make you feel bad uh, about yourself. Uh, you don't need those people in your life. So you, that's your boundary setting. You say to somebody, I, yeah, I don't I don't think what you're doing. I care about you. I love you. I, you know, whatever. But uh, this is not acceptable. I care about myself enough now that I don't want to take this this abuse. And that's what it is. It's emotional, verbal abuse, whatever it might be. I don't want it. So please stop it. Okay, so then you set the boundary. Now then, you got to be consistent. If you set a boundary, you got to be consistent with that boundary. You can't set a boundary and ultimatum get to tell people if, if, if this, then that, and then not do the that, if they do the this. <laughs> you, you, you have to follow through. Because if you say, uh, if people if you say don't do it anymore and they keep doing it, then you got to tell people, then you got to go away, like you said you would. Yeah, you say, I guess you didn't understand, but I'm serious. I don't want this behavior in my life anymore. And if, if you don't want to change, that's fine. I'm not asking you to change. I'm just saying if you don't change, be the bully to other people. Attack other people. Humiliate other people. Call other people morons that, in a way that's fine with me. I mean, I wish you wouldn't. But ultimately, if you do that, it's okay with me as long as you don't do it to me. And so if you want me in your life, you'll stop doing that. So if they, if you, if they do that to you, they keep doing it, and you stay, and you don't go away, then you'll never win. You'll never get the relationship you want. You'll never have, a, you know, so it's best to go away. And then you send a message to them that you were serious. And then it'll come down to they'll decide whether, oh, he, she was serious. Well, if I want them in my life, maybe I really better uh, clean up my act. Okay, I will. And then you can welcome them back into your life again because now they are treating you with respect and courtesy and consideration and thoughtfulness, and that's what you want. And now you have a relationship that you can, that can build and grow. But so if you lay down a boundary, you, you set a boundary, please don't do this. If you do, I won't be around. And they keep doing it. You need to go away. And if you don't, then they'll never take you seriously. And you'll continue to have a very dysfunctional relationship. So it's really important to set boundaries and maintain boundaries. And then equally so, it's really important to respect the boundaries of others. And... Uh, this is infuriating to a lot of people a lot of times, right? You get into an argument with your partner, and then they say, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it now. <laughs> and you want to talk about it now. You're very upset. Uh, you want to get closure on this. You want to figure this out. You know, you want to get it done. And they don't for whatever reason. Now, it may be they're being very wise that they don't want to talk about it now because if they start talking about it, they're going to, like, start screaming at you and calling you all sorts of names. Uh, but the point is, they set a boundary. They said, I don't want to talk about it. So you need to respect that. So you respect that by saying, okay, you don't follow them around the room, badgering them, insisting they talk about it. If they lock themselves in the, in the bathroom, you don't pound on the door and insist they talk about it. You go, okay, you don't want to talk about it now? I will respect that. However, this is an issue that we're not going to sweep under the rug. We need to address it. It needs to be dealt with. So we need to talk about it. So when would be a good time? After dinner? Later on in the afternoon? Over the weekend, let's set aside a time so that we can talk about it and resolve this with uh, when we're level-headed and calm and have had a chance to, to think about it and think about what's the best way to resolve this and what, what our position really is. So that's fine, but you, you have to respect the boundaries of others. If you don't, if you badger them and follow them around the room and yell at them and scream at them and try to enforce them and manipulate them to have the conversation now, even though they told they don't want to, they may, you may force them and badger them, but the end result will be a resentment you will have built up a resentment and then uh, that will, and then later somewhere down the road, because they have that resentment sitting there in their subconscious, you, you, you may say, Hey, the sky is blue. And they may like, you know, jump all over you and start attacking you and calling you names. 
uh, not because they're actually finding fault with the sky being blue or not, but because they're angry over what you did last Tuesday or last year or six years ago. It's amazing. A lot of people carry resentments and grudges uh, over many years, over decades, and, uh, and, it, and it's bad and it's sad. And, and a large part of it has to do with not respecting the boundaries. You know, communication is the key. Communication is the key uh, across the board. If you have a bad relationship, if you're unhappy in your relationship, most likely the communication is bad. And, and you should try to figure out a way to make it effective communication. When I say communication is bad, what I mean is usually people are guessing what the other person thinks. They don't actually ask the other person what they think. They assume, oh, well, I think he was trying to hurt me, or I think that was selfish and rude, or I think his intention was to do this or that, or I think she really meant to say this or that. We're guessing. We don't really know what our partner is thinking uh, because we haven't asked. Uh, maybe we're afraid to ask, but we've got to ask. If you don't know what's going on, if something your partner says or does is confusing to you and maybe hurtful and unloving, or maybe it makes you angry and irritated, you need to bring it up in a gentle, loving, compassionate way. What's going on? I don't get it. You seem irritated and angry with me. Is it something I've done? Uh, you know, you, you do want to do a reality check. You want to see what you want to understand what's going on. If you don't, and you just guess at what they're thinking or, or why they're doing something, that you, you easily could be wrong and you easily could be building up a resentment uh, over something that's not actually happening, which is why it's really best if you have any questions, any concerns, any jealousies, resentments, confusions, anything about anybody actually, it's always best to ask. But you ask in a gentle, loving, kind way. You know, you ask in a compassionate way, you ask in a way that isn't going to get them defensive and angry. Well that hopefully won't get them defensive and angry. And one good way in the communication, uh, you know, the way, the way to effectively communicate and, and hopefully get people not to be defensive and angry when you're going to tell them something that they may not want to hear about themselves is, uh, and I've said this before, but bears repeating, validate and then counterpoint. The validation part is, hey, it could be several ways. One way is, hey, I love you, I care about you. You know, I'm happy you're in my life. I'm glad we're together. However, you know, when you, when you leave the toilet seat up and at 2 o'clock in the morning, I fall into the toilet, I'm, I don't like that. So please stop doing that. You know, but you start out by saying, I love you, I care about you, uh, I'm, I'm happy we're together, blah, blah, blah. So you you, you kind of like, uh, you know, you, uh, you defuse any potential for defensiveness and anger. If you start out by saying, hey, jackass, how many times have I told you to, you know, to put the toilet seat down when you you know, you're going to get, get a fight. So you try to be gentle and kind. Uh, another another way to do a, a validation versus, a, a, you know, and counterpoint is you could say, hey, uh, I know I, I know it's a, a habit of yours uh, to leave the toilet seat up. I, I understand that it's, it's difficult and you're, you're not used to living with somebody else. And, you know, it's, 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 it's tricky, whatever. You, you, again, you, you lay down the groundwork that you're not like twisted and crazy and angry. And then you go... So I know, I know, I know it's easy to forget to do this stuff, but I, I wish you would remember and try to remind yourself in some way. Maybe we should put a little post-it note uh, next to the toilet paper. Uh, who knows? Uh, but the point is, uh, yeah, you validate and then you counterpoint. And this is a way of showing the person that that you're not out to just criticize them or attack them or hurt them. What you're really trying to do is is get along, and you're trying to point out to them the stuff that they're doing that so that they can fix, and 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 that you're open and want them to tell you stuff that. That, that you do that bothers them so that you can fix it. This is the way you keep everything on the table so that you're always getting along. And you should always, you know, it's really always important to, again, uh, go back to trying to hear how you sound to the other person. You know, a lot of times our, li our lives are so stressful these days, more than ever, it seems. And what we do is we tend to uh, allow that, that stress to leak out uh, onto other people in our lives uh, unfairly. Right? So we could be stressed out at work, or we could be stressed out about a whole bunch of things, or about money, or this or that. And then, we, and then we're hanging out with our, our friends or our loved ones, and we, we're in a pissy mood. We're irritable. We're, we're angry. We're petulant. It's got nothing to do with them. It's not their fault. They can't do anything about it. And, uh, and we're not even aware that we're doing it. But we got to be aware. you got to wake up and, to the fact that when you're upset, we do have the potential to, to displace our upset feelings onto other people inappropriately. And you need to try not to do that. Yeah. Okay, 14 minutes in, going strong. I got, 
I think I have five people here. They're still here anyway. Hello. <laughs> uh, what else can I talk about? Uh, well, I, yeah, I guess I could always talk about uh, forgiveness, how anger hurts and forgiveness heals. That's my mantra. Boy, anger, anger now is one of the most amazing things. It's, it's like out there everywhere. Anger is like, it, this is the, the default position now. People want to be angry. They need to be angry. They need to attack someone, to feel empowered, to feel bold, to feel that they're alive. I don't know to feel yeah that they're in control of something, but uh, you know it, this this social you know justice warrior thing is way out of hand. It's gotten way out of hand to, to the point where you know if you say the sky is blue, there's somebody gonna you know gonna object to that. Someone's gonna find that like insulting, and uh, and they're gonna resent it, and you're gonna get into a fight over it. I mean, we gotta turn down the thermostat of our judgment, or, or and our anger. And, you know, we need to cut people slack. You know, it's, it, don't you ever say something you don't mean? Uh, and, or don't you ever say something that gets misconstrued uh, and you meant well, but you used the wrong word or the wrong expression or it didn't come out right? Do you, did you, did, do you really like it when, like, uh, you know, 40 people then attack you and call you a racist and, a, you know, or whatever, and a fascist or, uh, or whatever they might call you? No, we need to cut people slack, give people the benefit of the doubt. None of us are perfect, <laughs> not even close, not even close. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so George Washington and Thomas Jefferson had slaves, right? Yeah, so that doesn't make them like the devil. Yeah, it wasn't cool. It was, it was a sign of the times, but it doesn't make them devils, and it doesn't mean we should neutralize them as important people in the history of our country or the planet. This is way going way overboard in like political correctness or, or oversensitivity. Uh, it's, it's not good and it creates greater polarization. You know, we need to dial it down. You know, there used to be an expression, there used to be an expression, don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, what happened to that? You know, do we really have to change Columbus Circle to indigenous people's circle in, in New York because Columbus, uh, you know, because Columbus discovered America, even though he didn't, uh, and, and eventually uh, people uh, that then, you know, committed genocide uh, of the indigenous population. So therefore Columbus is evil and we should tear down his statue. It's all crazy. I'm in favor of getting rid of, you know, evil. <laughs> yeah. But, you got to be careful about, you know, about throwing the, you know, the baby out with the bath, uh, bath water, as they say. But I started this rant, uh, this recent rant, uh, over anger, over anger and judgment and attack and criticism and negativity. It's too much. It's too much. So anger hurts, forgiveness heals. And, you know, uh, it, Martin Luther King Jr. had this expression, you know, I hate the sin, but love the sinner. Uh, this is the place we kind of have to get to where we recognize that people do bad things in the world. I personally don't think people are evil. Uh, I think they're mentally ill. When, when things that people do that are called evil, I call mentally ill. Uh, I personally don't believe that there is the devil or that there is some evil force or that people are born evil. I mean, when you look at a baby, uh, you, you know, come on, we become evil. We are trained to be evil. You know, it, it, we, we, we are trained to be bullies, whatever. We are trained. We start as, as, fair, as pretty much as a blank slate, an innocent, loving little creature, open to the wonders and the beauty of the world. And we have imaginary friends that we talk to and everything is lovely. And then little by little, day by day, year by year, year by year, our dysfunctional parents who do the best they can, but that's the way it goes, and our, you know, and, and, and our peers, and our, everybody's nuts. <laughs> yeah, so it's no wonder we get out of childhood uh, being a little crazy and a little resentful and angry with a chip on our shoulder, you know, and et cetera, et cetera. Anger hurts, forgiveness heals. When you're angry, you're actually attacking yourself. 
That's what that's that's the key. That's the bottom line. You may think when you get angry and you attack somebody else, uh, yeah, sure, you're attacking someone else with your yelling and you're screaming, you're ranting and you're raving. Yeah, you're throwing it at somebody else. But whatever you do to somebody else, you're actually doing to yourself. It's the law of reciprocity, and uh, and it's true. And I, in a way, I can give you a simple example of how that's true. You know when. When you yell at somebody and are really vicious and angry and yell, even if you, let's say you are justified. Yet, yet, let's say you feel really justified. They've said something really horrible to you, really nasty and mean, and you, uh, oh, I forgot my train of thought. Uh, yeah, you're just, you feel justified and you scream at them like crazy uh, and you call them names, right? And you feel justified. But, so how does it hurt you? Uh, yeah, you've attacked them, and uh, how does it hurt you? Well, believe it or not, after you walk away from that event, on some level, you are going to feel bad about yourself for uh, eviscerating them. You may not consciously be aware of it. Your ego may be so satisfied and so joyous, so full of the juice that you got to like eviscerate someone and just trash them, you know, verbally. Uh, it feels so great. It's, it's so energizing. But on some level, when you attack other people, you don't feel good about yourself. Even if you feel justified, even if you feel they attacked you, on some level, you are diminishing yourself. You're attacking yourself. You're diminishing yourself and your self-esteem. And, uh, you know, you are building up your guilt and your shame and your self-loathing. So you are attack. So when you attack others, you're attacking yourself. When you diminish others, you're diminishing yourself. And conversely, when you love others, you are loving yourself. When you accept and forgive others, you are accepting and forgiving yourself. It's so perfect. It's so perfect that the people that that the ultimate mental health tool uh, for mental health is everybody on the planet. Everybody you bump into is an opportunity to heal yourself. It's great. It's, and all you got to do is make good choices. What you got to do is decide like, to, to behave a consistent way with everyone, regardless of how they're behaving. And that comes down to what I call the Holy Trinity, truth, compassion, and calm. Actually, there's another Holy tr Trinity. Let's see, forgiveness, acceptance, and love. But, but, but truth, compassion, and calm ultimately contains the other ones as well. You, you want to try in all your interactions with the world, tell the truth. You want to try to be compassionate, loving. Uh, uh, accepting, forgiving, uh, tolerant, and you need to be calm. We need to be calm, uh, you know, because it, when we get angry and aggressive and, and righteous and arrogant and start screaming at people and shaking our fists and throwing things, you know, you know, guess what? Our message actually is getting diluted. Uh, they're not really hearing what we're we're protesting against because they're too busy thinking about trying to protect themselves and thinking about how crazy and angry and volatile and aggressive and violent you are, that any message that you have, of, of, uh, including a message about nonviolence, you know, is going to be lost. Any message is lost when you start raising your voice. Not lost completely, but you think you're making, uh, raising your voice is emphasis. You think you're going to convince somebody by raising your voice and yelling at them. You're going to get their attention. They're going to hear what you have to say, and it's going to sink in. But no, it's usually just sets into motion more grievance, more resentment, more miscommunication, more misunderstandings, more anger. Yeah. Um, forgive. Okay, so the golden rule is the key. Forgiveness is the key. Acceptance is the key. And getting rid of your judgment and attack thoughts. Don't sweat the small stuff. Unbelievable. It's that simple. Almost everything is small stuff. Right now, that's all we sweat. Right now, that's in my opinion, that that's almost everything you see on the internet these days. On the social media, is someone getting offended over something tiny? They've they've blown it up. They, they they've magnified it into something terrible, or, or you know, or something outrageous. Or, or it's just what a waste of time. What a waste of energy. Uh, you know, that's the irony of the irony of the social media of the, this whole amazing technology. Is that it's like all all technology, you know, uh, like like TV, uh, computers, the internet, social media. It's all great. It moves us forward. It, it, you know, it, it leads to other tremendous advancements for uh, in technology, and and it helps us to talk to each other better, and it helps us us to resolve problems better. But guess what? It also I don't you don't have to guess. You know, it creates problems too because now we are inundated with fake everything. You don't know where the truth is. 
who's telling the truth, who isn't. Uh, we've got angry people trolling everywhere to try to attack somebody at the, at the drop of a hat. Uh, it, it now actually isolates people. It pushes people away. It makes it bullies people. It makes people afraid to speak up. Uh, it's a crazy making system. We, it's a double edged sword. It's a double edged sword. Uh, and it, and, and it's not going well. It's actually an experiment that's not going well. It, it is, but the, the, the level of, of hatred and violence and aggression, particularly in, particularly in the Twitterverse, which now I call the Twitter perverse because uh, I, I've never seen so much anger and rage and hatred over, a lot of time over nothing. I, I remember like J Jonah Hill, I uh, saw so reading some, some tweets he got, this was years ago, but they were vicious and he didn't do anything. He didn't say anything, he didn't do anything, just people didn't like him. So they just started like, you know, attacking him over nothing that he actually said or did. You know, the, the anger, the hate is so intense. So look, so, so how are we going to get out of this mess? Again, it comes down to you and me. One mind at a time, one heart at a time, right? One person at a time. It, you know, get your own house in order. That's the key. That's the key. You know, get your head clear. Truth, compassion, calm, acceptance, forgiveness, compassion, right? Tolerance. Practice these principles every day without exception, without conditions. It's not like, oh, I'm going to practice this with you, but not with you because I don't like you. I mean, yeah, I'm going to show tolerance to, me, to you, but not to you because, you know, you were mean to me last Tuesday. There can be no exceptions to your love. There can be no exceptions or conditions. And you don't want anything in return. If you just give love, compassion, acceptance, tolerance. Don't worry so much about whether you're getting it back, okay? That's the ego. That's your ego trying to keep score. Uh, and that's your ego, and that and your ego is not your friend, okay? Your ego is not your friend. Don't worry so much about whether, you know, you get yours or whether people even thank you for being generous and kind and compassionate and tolerant. And don't get bitter and resentful if no one recognizes it or acknowledges it or calls attention to it. You can call attention to it in your own head. You can pat yourself on your own back. That's the problem with this internet and social media and everything else is people want attention. They want attention so desperately, so badly that they, you know they don't even. They're sitting in their room, and some 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 thought occurs to them that's incredibly stupid, but they think it's brilliant. Oh yeah, I gotta share this with everyone. Let everyone see how brilliant I am. And then then they post it everywhere, and you know, and they didn't do any critical thinking. It's really like an incredibly lame. Remarkably lame, stupid thing, but they wanted attention. They want attention. They want approval. We want attention. We want approval. That's fine, but uh, don't use your. Uh, don't be insane in the process of trying to get attention. Don't attack people unfairly in the process of trying to get attention. If you want to get attention, fine. If you want to, if you have something you really think is meaningful to say, then say it. But say it in a loving, compassionate, appropriate way. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. I, 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 I'm talking now for 26 minutes. Not bad. I could talk forever, I suppose, but uh, I'm getting tired. Uh, and uh, I thank anybody who was listening. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I uh, will uh, talk to you next time. Take care.